yourself and tell me what course you teach? Sure. My name is Paul Selvin. I'm a professor in the Department of Physics and Biophysics, and actually I have an appointment in cell and molecular biology as well. I teach a course that's sometimes called Biophysics 401. Other times it's called Physics 475. They're the same course. And uh, basically it's an introduction to biophysical techniques and ideas uh, com combining both physics and biology and by necessity uh, chemistry as well. When is your course typically offered? In the fall, spring, or summer? Uh, it has, it's offered what semester is this? This is fall. So in general, it's offered once a year, and it's at this point, it should be every fall. What is the format of your course? Are there discussion sections? Is it taught by a uh, lecture or a seminar format? Right. Uh, there, there are no dis discussion sections. There are twice a week for an hour and 20 minutes, a lecture, which in general I give. Uh, we try to make the course uh, very interactive such that during the lecture we'll have maybe four times where I will ask some question to the audience and then the students will get together and usually just two or three people and discuss it and then a afterwards I'll bring everybody back and say okay what did you discuss and what was the answer and we proceed from there. In general the framework uh, is basically determined by myself in terms of beginning is basic biology which you need to know and basic physics and so forth. How are students in your course graded? Are there exams, quizzes, or homework? Yes, okay, there, there is basically a midterm and a final. The midterm is worth 30%, the final is worth 35%, and then another 25% is homework. In general, there is weekly homeworks that ends up being 10 or 11 homework. There is not a homework, of course, before the midterm and the final. And uh, the, those are extremely important. Um, and oh, and you get you do get uh, five percent just for showing up. And that I like it when people show up and uh, participate. So I give people credit for that. Are there any required textbooks for this course? Uh, unfortunately, there isn't, a reason I say unfortunately is because there isn't really a textbook out there. And perhaps by next year I will have a textbook, but it's unclear. Do you provide students with PowerPoint slides or lecture outlines before class? Yes, in fact, there, there is a lecture outline of the whole course. And then after each lecture, I put on the web my PowerPoints. That is exactly what I talked about in class. Also, usually just before class, I, I submitted a pre-lecture, which is basically the lecture that I plan on having. What kind of background knowledge do I need to take this course? Are there prerequisites? Yeah, there, that's um, a serious issue since I basically have taught it primarily for physicists who have an interest in biology but don't know much of the biology or much of even the, the chemistry or, or they don't know the physics technique, um, how they will apply to biology. So what I insist is that you have taken essentially, I guess, I think it's whatever the 
so the introductory mechanics and introductory ENM for for engineers. And you usually also you should have some statistical physics background. I actually end up going over it, almost all of it. So if you're willing to do it, I will give you the information, but having to learn it truly from scratch, it's, it's a pretty rare person who's willing to do that. Um, how do topics covered in your course apply to current research and medical advancements? Yes. Um, in general, they do. It's kind of amazing, though. The primary topic is sort of basic research that you know professors do. Though, in fact, there have been a tremendous number of applications. For example, uh, in DNA sequencing, there it's really a revolutionary, revolutionized revolutionary uh, uh, area and for that you also you generally want to do for example single molecule fluorescence and we study exactly what they are and another example is PCR polymerase chain reaction we study what those are and then we actually have looked at it in terms of breast cancer, for example. Um, yeah, so that so there definitely are applications, real life applications. What opportunities do you provide outside of class for students to ask questions or get assistance? Yeah. Uh, well, first, in terms of asking questions, I I love when people ask questions and. Uh, they're essentially forced to uh, by responding to my questions during the lecture. Outside of class, they also have, a, uh, I have a office hour and there are two or three TAs and they have like, let's say, one and a half hours of uh, teaching at times also. It's also particularly important for the homework. Is there anything else that you'd like to tell us about your course? Uh, it's really cool. <laughs> That's it. Much. Thank you.